Hello and welcome to WePC Benchmarks. Today we're taking a look at the new DDR5 RAM. It is finally here, released alongside the new Z690 chipset and Intel's 12th gen. Here we tested 4800MHz modules, which is the minimum speed for DDR5, but they do have timings of 40, 40, 77. And so we have gone much quicker, but with bigger latency. This is expected as with each generation we do get bigger latencies with the bigger transfers, but it should be better performance overall. The voltage controller has also been moved onto the sticks, and so you should have better control over the voltage and overclocking to the sticks individually. Now we'll check if there is any performance change, whether the RAM is running single or dual channel. We tested these with an RTX 3090 and an i9-12900K on an ROG Maximus Z690 board. With each test we did use 16GB, either dual or single. We start off with control, and at 1440p Ultra, the single channel averages 130fps, with a 1% of 106 and 0.1% of 64, with the dual channel averaging 130fps, with a 1% of 106 and a 0.1% of 100. Up at 4K, the single is averaging 68fps, with a 1% of 56 and 0.1% of 27. Then the dual is averaging 69fps, for 1% of 58 and 0.1% of 28. Moving on to CSGO, at 1440p, and a single is averaging 337 APS, for 1% of 78 and 0.1% of 21. And the dual is averaging 355 FPS for 1% of 124 and 0.1% of 47. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 336 FPS for 1% of 122 and 0.1% of 11, with the dual averaging 321 FPS with a 1% of 148 and 0.1% of 51. Cyberpunk is next, and at 4040p, single channel is averaging 101 FPS, with a 1% of 81 and 0.1% of 72. Then the dual is averaging 99 FPS, with a 1% of 84 and 0.1% of 80. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 69 FPS, with 1% of 46 and 0.1% of 12, with the dual averaging 69 FPS, for 1% of 58 and 0.1% of 14. Then we have Days Gone, and at 1440p, the single is averaging 151 FPS, for 1% of 71 and 0.1% of 34, with the dual averaging 142 FPS, with a 1% of 87 and 0.1% of 59. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 91 FPS, for 1% of 63 and 0.1% of 45, with the dual averaging 84 FPS, for 1% of 64 and 0.1% of 43. Moving on to Far Cry 6, at 1440p, and the single is averaging 87 FPS, for 1% of 43 and 0.1% of 34, with the dual averaging 96 FPS, for 1% of 51 and 0.1% of 41. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 65 FPS, for 1% of 36 and 0.1% of 31, and the dual is averaging 66 FPS, for 1% of 46 and 0.1% of 35. Next up is Gas Station Simulator, and at 1440p, the single is averaging 121 FPS, with a 1% of 72 and 0.1% of 31, with the dual averaging 125 FPS, for 1% of 82 and 0.1% of 35. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 74 FPS, for 1% of 40 and 0.1% of 26, with the dual averaging 75 FPS, for 1% of 56 and 0.1% of 29. We have New World next, and at 4040p, the single is averaging 81 FPS, for 1% of 67 and 0.1% of 19, with the dual averaging 125 FPS, with a 1% of 72 and 0.1% of 57. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 80 FPS, for 1% of 64 and 0.1% of 22 with the dual averaging 126 FPS, for 1% of 80 and 0.1% of 67. Then we have Rust, which at 1440p, the single is running 104 FPS, with a 1% of 27 and 0.1% of 7, with the dual averaging 126 FPS, with a 1% of 88 and 0.1% of 58. Then at 4K, the single is averaging 86 FPS, for 1% of 54 and 0.1% of 18, with the dual averaging 104 FPS, with a 1% of 26 and 0.1% of 7. We also ran them through Cinebench R23, and on single core, the single channel scores 1954 and the dual scores 1949. Then on multi core, the single scores 25,650 and the dual scores 25,777. So, as you can see, there isn't much difference between the two options. It only seems to affect the open world games like Frost and New World, where the dual offers up 20 to 40 more FPS. So not really seeing much other effect with a lot of difference down to small error rather than big differences. But anyway, thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.